Would you like another shirt? I can't see it. This is the back. Okay, here we go. Trust me, this won't be long because I want you on the phone to bring out the vote. But we have three very special guests here with us today. And I thought I'd just give a quick thank you. The two toughest things to do as a candidate is can't thank people enough for giving their hard earned dollars and their labor. Um, and I can't tell you, from the bottom of my heart, I can never thank you enough for what you're doing here today. You know, there's no way to thank you enough because there's a lot of other things that you can be doing at this time, but you're taking time out of your busy schedule for this all important race. This race will determine who's controlling the House of Representatives. We're one of the top 10 races in the nation. This will determine whether Nancy Pelosi is speaker. By the way, Nancy Pelosi is pretty much got to run in this race. You know, every every two years, elected officials come forward and they say, "This is the most important election of your lifetime." Yeah. Many times, that's not true. I do believe that this is. This is one of the most important elections of your lifetime. Yeah. This is what's at stake in the next 13 days. I get asked multiple times in, 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 throughout the campaign uh, cycle, why are you doing this, Tony? Uh, they're pounding you in the, in the mailbox, in the TV. Why do you do this? Very simple. I learned from my father, who's my hero, who served in Korea and Vietnam, fought for the very liberties and freedoms we enjoy today. And after he got injured in Vietnam, he became a drill sergeant at Fort Ord Army Base. And I learned from my dad that it's up to every generation to leave your city, state, and nation a better spot than what we have. And I have two beautiful children. My little girl, Ruby, just turned seven last week. And my boy, we call him Tiny Tony. He's five. And I believe this is the first time in American history where it's in question, are we going to leave a better future for our kids and grandkids? That's what's at stake in the next 13 days. And if you don't mind, I use a sports analogy. All of you uh, know that I played semi-pro basketball. I played team sports my whole life. Um, when I was growing up as a kid and when I played in college, whenever there was a close score or a close game, we were down a point or up a point or even, with 10 seconds left, the coach called timeout. We went in that huddle. And in that huddle, I always fought the coach. I say, Coach, right, do the play for me. Give me the ball at the end of the game. We're going to win the game. And more times than not, the coach drew up that play, put the ball in my hands, and we won the game. The same analogy is here. The difference is it's just not me. It's our us. You're all here part of Team Strickland. We're not worried about a, a race in Oklahoma. This is different in California this time because redistricting. We're not worried about other races around the country because the future direction of this country is in our hands. The ball is in our hands. And what we do in the next 13 days is going to determine the direction of this country. And I will tell you, 13 days from now, when I become your next congressman, <laughs> in January, when I sit, work with these three wonderful leaders and take that oath of office, I hope all of you get goosebumps to say, I have a part to play in turning around this country for the next generation, to make sure my kids and your kids have that same opportunity that I had growing up here in Ventura County. My opponent's not from Ventura County. My opponent's from L.A. And we're a world away from L.A. here in Ventura County. I don't believe you can represent a community if you've never lived in the community. My opponent's never lived a day in her life in Ventura County. You can't represent a community if you're not from I lived in this community, I grew up in this community, I've lived in this community for over 40 years. My kids are going to grow up in this community. And I'll promise you this, no one will fight harder than me to serve this community because my concerns are the same as my neighbor's concerns. And I work well, as you all know, uh, I have a proven track record in the state legislature. And I'm very humbled to say, the community I grew up in, I've represented in the state senate and the state assembly. And I can't tell you how humbled I will be to be your next congressman to represent your voice in Washington, D.C. We love you, Tony. Thank you.
Chairman Pete Sessions, someone I've admired for a long time. And one of his famous sayings, and one of the sayings that I pass on, by the way, to my whole campaign team, is winners do things that losers won't do. We're here today to turn out the vote. That's something my opponent's not doing. My opponent can't put this room together. Um, my opponent doesn't have the hardworking heart that all of you have to make those phone calls. My opponent would not wake up in the morning as all of you see me waving at people going to work at 6.38 in the morning. My opponent doesn't do that. It takes hard work to do what we do to get across the finish line. And I know we're going to work harder than our opponent. That's why we're going to get across the finish line. And I'm honored to say Pete Sessions is my friend. And I'm honored to say that he's here with uh, two of his colleagues. But I will first introduce uh, my good friend. And also, we have a, another thing in common. We're both Dallas Cowboy fans. Woo! <laughs> Dallas Cowboy training camps here in Oxnard. It wasn't Dallas Cowboy. So, anyways, without further ado, the NRCC chairman and thank him for his help and he's helped us in this campaign, Congressman Peter. Thank you. Good way to get to sunny California. <laughs> I tell you what, Tony's going to learn a lot of these sayings, and here's another one of my favorites. The successful rain dance has a lot to do with timing. Are you guys ready to win? Yeah! We are excited about being with the great Tony Strickland. Tony, I'm not a basketball guy, I'm a football guy and a track guy, but I understand the concept of what winners do things that losers won't do. And that is given the guy that can get it done, or the woman, or whoever it is, the person who can get things done, that's what I am about. I'm about achieving great things for our country. Why are you here and why am I here? We're here because we're worried. We're worried sick about our country the direction that we're going, and we saw firsthand what happened when the Democrats had everything. Taxing, spending, why they even believe in putting 2,400 page bills that you don't even read and get your vote on. <laughs> why you're here. You believe that America can have a brighter future. You believe... will be all about making not just your life better. By the way, driving here, lots of small business. Small business is the background of our country. The differences between where they are, the Democrats, and we are as Republicans is the difference of night and day. So you're here for the same reason we are. Three of us, however, showed up because we also care about who our colleague is going to be. What kind of person would you send? A person who will be there as a sure vote for Nancy Pelosi? No. no. Or a sure vote for somebody who says, we're going to come and continue to shake up Washington, D.C. until they get it right and not be satisfied until we balance the budget. Yeah. Yeah. People back in charge instead of government, and perhaps more importantly, to grow our country because it's too early to throw in the towel and say it's done. We have a GDP growth rate of 1.3%. That means that it will take us five years to come the side of our economy, while some of our competitors, China and India, will do it in 12 or 13 years. Trust me. The person that has a GDP of 8% will own the economy that has one of 1.3%. So it's also about our future. Now, today I'm pleased to also tell you that I brought one of my, not only my best friends, but a guy who has joined me as the deputy chairman of the NRCC for the last four years. A guy who's helped us run what is a hundred million dollar chunk of change of business that's dedicated to winning. And he and I, as best friends, are out on the road and have been the last month. And we want to let you know that we're here to help sell the fight. And that's what Greg Walden does. 
We're both Eagle Scouts. So, like Cody, we're proud of scouting. I, both my boys are Scouts. But we believe, because we grew up this way, in leaving our campsite better than the way we found it. <laughs> but we also believe in leaving our country stronger and better than the way we found it. This young man is from Hood River, Oregon. He has Mount Hood in his backyard and the mighty Columbia out the front door of his house. Help me welcome the gentleman from Hood River, Oregon, the great deputy chairman of the NRTC, Greg Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for being out. Thanks for making the phone calls. Thanks for reaching out to voters. As Pete has said, Elections are won by those that show up. Let's not wake up two weeks from now and go, darn, we missed it by a handful of votes. My father ran for the legislature in 1970 in Oregon, got elected. So we elected in 72, and then this guy ran against him in 74, and he won by 100 votes. Same guy ran in 76 and beat him by 34. My dad tried to come back in 78, lost by about 100 votes. Three elections decided by 18 people on average. I hear footsteps every election. I take no votes for granted, but neither do you, and I know you're not why you're here. It's about getting people to turn out to vote for the right person. As I stand here, I look back, and I thought, this is the state that gave America a lot of rain. gave us as Americans a strong country with renewed spirit, a great economy. He believed in peace through strength. Those are the values that really put us, think where we would have gone if we made that other choice another four years of the guy from Georgia. Think, you know, when, when President Obama whispered to the Russian leader, tell Putin, I'll have a little more flexibility. I instantly thought about Ronald Reagan walking out of the talks in Iceland yeah. and saying, I will not compromise America's security. To heck with it, I'm walking out. And he did. Remember Nancy, Mrs. Reagan was quoted saying, when I saw Rodney's face, I realized something got terribly wrong. <laughs> what he got wrong is he wasn't going to give up on his view of how to protect America from the aggressor of the Soviet Union. What a difference We need strong people who understand hard work will go help us clean up Washington and turn it around and Tony Strickland. Yes. My wife and I were small business owners for 22 years. We were in the radio station business. We bought two of them, we put another one on the air, bought two more over the course of 22 years. In the early years, we knew what it was like to sign the front of a payroll check in some months not to have our name on the pay to line, just the pay line, right? Because we were building our business. Actually, we built our business. Yeah. Yeah. of a broadcast tower in January and a foot of snow with an engineer trying to replace it with a, a, the transmission line that had shorted out. And then my wife had to do it the next night because I couldn't be there because I was worried we were going out. I had to leave, so she did it all night. You know, this is what you do in small business. You make sacrifices. You take your vision, your ideas, and grow it up. And we built up our business. And after 22 years, we sold it. You know, this is what America is about, giving that opportunity. I'll tell you, Lord, that again, we often look back and thought if we'd known in the beginning what we knew in the end, maybe we wouldn't have done it. We, you know, that's the spirit of American entrepreneurism, too. You got an idea, you think if you just put a little more effort into it, you'll have worked a little harder. And we should reward that, not demonize that. We should have a, a president right. that will lead us all together yeah. forward to put America back on the front end in, in full control on our we can have that with Mitt Romney and our friend Paul Ryan, who's standing there in the back. Pete <laughs> 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 and I, the person I introduced next, Dr. Andy Harris, are working our tails off like you all are. 
to make sure that Nancy Pelosi only handles that gavel once every two years, and that's to hand it off to John Bader. <laughs> comes from the eastern shore of Maryland. I come from Oregon. He comes from Maryland. We got this thing covered close to toast. <laughs> Pete's from Texas. We just not going to go. <laughs> <laughs> wish he was from Oregon. Or... <laughs> Dr. Harris ran for the House in uh, 2008, won his primary, and didn't win the general. But he was undeterred. And then he saw what happened with Obamacare and really got inspired. Won his primary in 2010, and won his general election in 2010. He has an incredible family story to tell you about. He has an incredible insight into health care and medicine, but he's going to talk about it. He's an extraordinary leader to have in the U.S. House of Representatives. Please welcome, from the eastern shore of Maryland, Dr. Andy Harris. folks uh, turning out. Look, why am I all the way over here? Well, one reason is, uh, actually, my son lives in Camarillo. He's <laughs> <laughs> my children. My parents are immigrants to this country. I'm a first-generation American. Joe's a second-generation American. My grandson, Charles, is, is uh, one-year-old. is a third-generation American. My parents came here for the American dream. It's that simple. They waited, and they waited until America would take them in. They came here, made a life for themselves, a successful life for, uh, for their four boys. I'm living the American dream. I want Joe and Charles, my grandson, to live that same American dream. Right? Yeah. Right, you got two choices. The team that Tony's running against doesn't believe in the same American dream. It's that simple. Their team, under the leadership and I put that in quotes, of this president. Put that in quotes too. He's destroying the American dream. We've simply got to change teams in the presidency, and we got to send us reinforcements like Tony to the House of Representatives. Right so we can the second reason I'm excited to be here is because, look, I've been practicing medicine for 30 years. I know what Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, although we can call it Obamacare now because the president likes that now. <laughs> Obamacare will destroy American medicine. Yeah. And it will destroy American medicine for those of you who are on Medicare, and it will destroy American medicine for me, my son, my grandson. I'm not going to put up with that. I've spent 30 years delivering medical care. We have the best medical care in the world, and I'm not going to watch the president and Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid destroy it. Deputy Chair said, I've lost the race and I've won a race. I know what it's going to take to win a race in this kind of district. Because when I was in the state Senate, I ran a district that had 30% more Democrats than Republicans. In. And I won twice. And I'll tell you, those of you sitting here and standing up here, this is a finger check on November 7th. If you don't have a callus on the tip of your finger, I'm <laughs> wrong. So we didn't do enough. If your knuckles aren't callous from knocking on doors, you didn't do enough. If your hands aren't callous from putting those long signs up, you didn't do enough. We did 60,000 phone calls on the last weekend out of my wow. campaign. It was 60,000 phone calls. I'm going to challenge you all to do that. Because if you do that, and you knock on the doors, and you put up those signs, Tony Strickland will be the next congressman from Ventura. <laughs> Chairman of the NRCC, he said, thank you for being here. I will tell you, and I'm asking you, send us a person who can work well with others. <laughs> we will aim for the very best. Send us a person who wants everybody to succeed, not just a few people. Send us somebody who can do their homework and be thoughtful and make a wise choice and a decision. Send us somebody that understands and respect, respects not just small business, but individuals who are struggling in their life and 
want to make their life better and who respects the American dream. Send us somebody who is able to come home on the weekends and sell what he's doing. And instead of making excuses to tell you what the advantages are, Tony Strickland, I believe, we believe, from the NRCC is that person. Amen. Tony can make the tough decisions in the future. I apologize. My friends, every Democrat across this country is trying to say, it's not really that bad. Oh, yes, it is, Mr. President. And the last point that I'd make is this. It does matter when men and women, our children or young adults or any of us, go to the grocery store and, and look at food prices go up, look at gasoline prices go up, Look at all Get sorts of, of things happening that our median income is four thousand dollars per family down across this country. Our future needs to be important to this country, also, not just what the way Barack Obama talks about it. So, if you send us Tony Strickland, he will be a part of a majority team that will get it done for America. Thank you for being here.